Hello everyone, this is Cobalt. This is my next video in my character analysis series for Brawlhalla. I'll be doing a brief introduction of the character, followed by a frame data analysis on their signatures, and if you want to skip all this and get straight into the info, there's a timestamp in the description, and don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with the release of your favorite legend. In these analyses, I wanted to focus solely on the character's signatures. Light attack combos are covered much more in depth elsewhere than I ever could, and function pseudo comparably for all characters of that weapon class, so I'm not going to be discussing the general neutral of the character with their weapons unless it pertains in some way to their signatures. Firstly, I want to give clear descriptions of the terminology I'll be using. Startup frames are the amount of frames that happen after a move has begun until the first hitbox of the move becomes active. Active frames are the duration of frames that the move contains a hitbox that can collide with your opponent. FAF, or First Actionable Frame, is the first frame available where your character is able to move again after a move has been started. For all of this data, I use the character's jump to display the First Actionable Frame. Lastly, On Miss refers to the move not making contact with an opponent, and On Hit refers to the move making contact with an opponent. I'm going to be doing my analysis today on the next newcomer to Brawlhalla, Moonin. Moonin is, at her core, in charge of patrolling the Nine Realms of Creation and reporting her findings back to Odin. She's a performative artist with her sister Hugin, who also happens to be one of her other skins. Additionally, she rats on Caspian by playing the Pink Panther theme whenever he's stealing something, and I absolutely love that. Moonin's weapons are Scythe and Bow, a highly requested weapon combination, and one that will likely result in very heavy strings. She doesn't have any competitive results as of yet, but with this weapon combination, I wager that won't take long. Bow and Scythe are both doing really well in the meta right now, even despite the nerfs a few patches back to Bow. Her stat distribution is 5 Strength, 4 Defense, 6 Dex, and 7 Speed in base. This is a pretty good stat distribution, honestly, and you could even run a minus Dex stance and plus Speed and be fine even with the bow combos. I think Moonin is a super cool character in terms of her design, and I love the Rockstar motif. So, will this Rock and Roller signature be able to help her out in the competitive metagame? Well, let's find out. Let's start with her Scythe. Scythe Side Sig has 19 frames of startup, active frames from 20 to 43 with an FAF of 60. It functions the same on miss as it does on hit. Moonin jets forward, shrouding herself in a musical score before rocketing out some notes from her scythe going forward. This sig has average startup and slightly below average FAF. It's a pretty standard side sig in my opinion. Spacing with this is important because the active hitboxes are stacked on Moonin for the first portion of the move and don't become disjointed until a little bit later. Scythe Neutral Sig has 18 frames of startup, active frames from 19 to 32 with an FAF of 53. It functions differently on miss than it does on hit. Should the move connect, the active frames extend to frame 50 with a new FAF of 69. Moonin jumps upward and swings her scythe forward in a giant slash of music. This sig is similar to Zul's neutral sig on axe and as such functions comparably. It covers jumping opponents as well as those recovering high. Though, for a neutral sig, it has slower startup than I had originally anticipated. It has a decent amount of active frames and has some decent coverage, and it has pretty good FAF given its vertical movement. It has coverage close to scythe neutral light, so it might be good after a neutral or an up dodge after scythe neutral light. Scythe down sig has 25 frames of startup, active frames from 26 to 42 with an FAF of 52. It functions the same on miss as it does on hit. This is a passive sig where Moonin leaps up and back before jetting out some musical notes from her scythe towards the ground. The notes move a considerable distance from Moonin, with decent active frames so it has some decent coverage to it. It's pretty slow in terms of its startup, though this is to be expected from a passive sig. It does however have really good FAF and I think that it functions very well as a get off me option for Moonin and effectively punishes players attempting to approach her head on. Next up is her bow. Bow side sig has 19 frames of startup, active frames from 20 to 35 with an FAF of 58. It functions the same on miss as it does on hit. Moonin jumps forward and upward accompanied by a musical score, then musical notes are fired downward in a succession like arrows. The signature is reminiscent of Caspian's down sig on Katars, and coverage ledge options quite well. It's average in terms of its startup and FAF, and it has a decent amount of active frames. It serves as a decent mix-up option for approaching opponents, and has some really cool animation to it. Bow Neutral Sig has 19 frames of startup, active frames from 20 to 35 with an FAF of 51. It functions the same on miss as it does on hit. Moonin points her bow upward and shoots a musical explosion above her. The sig functions comparably to Koji's neutral sig on bow, but Moonin's is slightly slower on startup and has larger hitboxes as well. It has average startup and slightly below average FAF, and is great for catching opponents jumping and those recovering high. The large exploding hitboxes will definitely provide her some beneficial utility on her kit. It can be effective as well if the opponent neutral dodges after a downlight. Bow down sig has 14 frames of startup, active frames from 15 to 32 with an FAF of 49. It functions the same on miss as it does on hit. 
Moonin leaps upward before shredding her music, releasing two electrified music notes on either side of her. This sig has some hitboxes immediately below her at the start as well, so it does hit stacked opponents. The startup on this sig is really solid honestly, with decent active frames and lower than average FAF. It's a solid KO option with upward movement and a hitbox spread that can make a really quick punish option for approaching opponents and could potentially offer some utility when slide charge off stage. So overall, her six are pretty average in terms of their frame data with an exception or two. Her startup is pretty par for the course with the exception of her down sig on bow, which is a really really strong KO option to boot with very little end lag. I think that this sig is really good considering its hitbox placement, even though they aren't the biggest hitboxes, I think it's an incredibly good signature. They do have some pretty good FAF though, I'm not gonna lie, as most of them are 53 frames and below. She seems like a pretty well-rounded character, and I think that her SIGs complement the kits of their respective weapons quite well. They offer coverage in areas that accentuate the combo game of their design, and with both Scythe and Bow being pretty relevant right now in the metagame, I think she'll do quite well. I love the animation designs for this character, and the way that they incorporate the musical notes and scores into her character are insanely cool. BMG really does a great job of animating these characters, and I have to give them a huge amount of credit for how well they are done. As soon as a new legend drops again, I'll do another one of these, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the release of the next legend, and hope to see you guys back for the next one. Tune in for the next video, I'll be discussing the best platform fighting games. Once again, I'm Cobalt, and thanks for watching.